Hello, NRF attendees, and welcome to our Big Ideas session on transformation with an SAP digital core. My name is John Waymeyer, and I'm an Executive Vice President at Capgemini, and I'm very excited to be joined by two key leaders of T. Marzetti's digital core transformation, Liam Durbin, the CIO of T. Marzetti's, and Kim Fry, the Director of Enterprise Solutions. Over the next 20 minutes, you will hear how T. Marzetti has created a highly standard cloud-based digital core using SAP technology and about the value it will deliver. Liam, over to you. A little bit about T. Marzetti. So uh, a lot of folks know us as T. Marzetti, but the actual parent company is Lancaster Colony Corporation, which uh, in its history has sold many things, but now we are entirely food. And Marzetti is the brand that most uh, people know us for. And we're very fortunate, particularly in uh, economic fluctuations that were split almost evenly between retail and food service. So we serve um, large grocery chains and moms and pops for retail. We also serve large uh, restaurant chains, both um, full service and uh, fast food in the food service business. And that helps us uh, ride out difficult economic times, including the one we're in now, where when retail is struggling, food service often picks up the slack and vice versa. From the highest level, We've been very, very fortunate. Uh, I think the project has gone very well, but we have got some some tailwinds which make our situation very enviable. Um, first of all, it has been viewed from the get-go as a business transformation, uh, not a technology project. Um, so we have had fantastic executive support. Our CEO and all of our MLT are aware of the transformation that's taking place, and that has allowed um, us to get the resources we need, both in, in people and in financing, um, and also the use of... Uh, uh, organizational change management, which unfortunately in many projects is seen as an afterthought, we've placed it in the forefront um, and that has allowed us to uh, focus on the long-term uh, project and not fumble the ball on the one yard line. We've also been very fortunate that uh, we chose Capgemini as our partner. They brought uh, to the table uh, fantastic resources and some accelerators in the project management space, including the use of Agile, uh, which has helped our project along. Um, in our situation with, with Agile, the, um, it has been a very good fit with the fact that we, ha we haven't done a lot of customization. And I think the fact that we're attempting to use as much of the functionality out of the box with SAP has been helpful in, a, in an iterative approach. So with that, Kim, if you'd like to uh, continue. Sure. So uh, as John noted, I am the Director of Enterprise Solutions at Team RZD, and I have overall responsibility for our transformation program called Project Ascent. And really, as Liam noted, it's the foundation for us to address business challenges and opportunities, both now in a platform for us to do so in the future. And it's really built on a, a set of guiding principles that we have for ourselves: um, a fit to standard and sticking fit to standard industry solution, standardizing our processes, particularly where we don't have have differentiated processes from a business perspective that don't create advantage for us in the market, um, creating clean and trusted data so that not only can we, um, can we run our business, but we can analyze what's happening and make better and quicker decisions in the future, a focus on KPI data-driven analytics, and modernizing our IT um, infrastructure as well as our landscape to minimize technical debt. And so uh, how how are we doing that? For, so from a technology perspective, um, I, I mentioned that we wanted to modernize our IT landscape while minimizing our technical debt. And one of the key things uh, that we're doing in order to support that is transitioning to SAP S4 HANA um, single tenant edition or enhanced edition in the cloud. Um, that allows us to take advantage of um, some of the flexibilities that that solution provides us to meet our requirements while also shifting some of the support from an application and infrastructure Structure perspective uh, to SAP. It all will also allow us to take upgrades um, multiple times a year and stay current both from a business capability perspective as well as a solution perspective. In addition to S4, um, we're implementing CRM and BW to support trade promotion management and allowing us that integration I talked about between the two systems. And we're implementing an, integ um, an integration platform through Dell Boomi to allow us to more um, effectively integrate between our, our systems. So really our enterprise architect likes to say SAP will be the sun and everything in our landscape will revolve around the sun with support from Dell Boomi to integrate with it. A critical success factor in digital core transformations is keeping the digital core clean or standard. To make that happen, you need to understand how the software supports industry-specific best practices, 
and communicate them to the business users in a way that maximizes the adoption of the standard processes. Capgemini's PATH SAP industry platforms are a comprehensive set of tools and methods that do just that. A pre-configured S4 core with the user stories, sprint plans that allow for S4 integration prerequisites, and for standard processes, we also deliver Enable Now training content and test automation. Kim mentioned the benefits of using an agile method. The Ascent program used iCaptivate, Capgemini's fully agile method specifically created to implement SAP. Higher levels of standard adoption is the number one benefits to agile. Business users get to experience the actual business processes in the system during the build print sprints. Using real system processes, they are led through a SIPOC exercise that demonstrates how the standard industry best practices take their process inputs and deliver their required process outputs. The result is a much greater understanding of how the standard solution meets their needs and extraordinary levels of adopting S4 enabled standard industry best practice. High levels of standard processes means changing the way business is done. Kim will tell us how Enable Now elements of Capgemini's PATH industry platform have supported organizational change. Kim? And one of the key aspects of, of um, running an agile project and one of the most important things that we felt we got benefit out of is the closeness and the connectedness, not just with the business project team members, but the individuals back in the business and um, staying connected with them throughout the the design and build phase into the test phase and then into um, the go live preparation phases. And that's really critical, particularly from a change management perspective and iteratively connecting back with the the business team members continuously was a core component of why agile was was really important to us and why we found it to be be successful. It wasn't just on the delivery side. It was also on the change management side and the connectedness with our end users continuously throughout the project. Oftentimes you'll see um, that you, you engage the end users in a build print or in a blueprint uh, and then you forget Forget about them until UAT, and the solution evolves significantly through that period of time. And allowing ourselves to iteratively work with the business uh, has had significant value to us um, and their solution adoption. Another piece of solution adoption that that we have. Um, integrated into our solution is SAP's Enable Now product. Um, it is a digital adoption platform that really sits on top of SAP and provides end user support directly in the application itself, provides access to change management documentation, um, such as learning materials or access to links uh, directly to the end user on the screen that they're using. And so it can be used both as a point in time support mechanism uh, post go live, but then um, as you bring on new users in the future and or um, need continuous learning opportunities for, let's say, something you only do once a month. It's really a tool that enables the end user to take learning um, and keep learning in their own hands directly when they're doing their work in the system. Um, in addition, um, the from an agile methodology perspective, we were able to use Enable Now uh, to record and provide information to our end users on what the system looks like and how they can anticipate doing their work in the future through leveraging Enable Now, um, not just as a as a as a mechanism post go live, but as a change management management mechanism during the implementation itself. It's a very simplified user experience that is directly integrated with the application itself, both on the trade side and S4 for us. And we've found it extremely valuable as a component of our change management methodology. So I think we've talked about a lot of things here. We've talked about our technical solution. Um, John talked about our industry, uh, the CPG path capabilities and how that's helped us to accelerate um, and stick to our guiding principles. And I just talked a little bit about change management and particularly enable now. But when I think about um, really how we are driving to maximize our benefits, it's really those three things together and working in tandem that has allowed us to, to be successful. So really, at the end of the day, that you know those those three stools ha have um, helped guide us. Um, but there's a multitude of reasons why I feel we've been uh, successful. Um, so Liam talked at the beginning about executive support and business engagement. Um, I can't stress enough how important it has been to us to have the right teamers at E-Team. Um, 
we were lucky that our business leaders were were um, able to and willing to give the best of their teams to come support this project. Because at the end of the day, we're building the future of our organization through the trans through the business transformation that we're going through. And so having the best built business talent, having the next generation of leaders in the organization supporting this project and driving the requirements and driving the solutions has been extremely important to, to our ability to stick to our timelines as well as make good decisions and stick to our guiding principles. Um, we were not an SAP shop before we started this, this project. And so it was extremely important that we weren't going to um, build an SAP army, but we did need to hire top, very focused SAP talent to help be that median between our business users who maybe didn't have SAP experience and our Capgemini partners. And really being that liaison that keeps a foot both on the IT side and on the business side, understands what we're trying to achieve and can take that forward. Um, and then I think another aspect um, that that we we learned early on is that project delivery leaders with significant SAP implementation experience was extremely valuable and helpful. Um, having uh, individuals both on the business side and the IT side that understand fundamentally what SAP is and how to make decisions in a project like this allowed us to better integrate with our Capgemini partners and really accelerate decision making because we weren't coming up to speed on SAP as a solution. Instead, we were we were working in tandem to figure out how do we deliver this in an integrated way for what's best for our business. Um, we talked a lot about executive support and engagement um, and making sure that you stay close to your executives. We have found that extremely successful because if we see an issue, we can address it very quickly, but also it helps in the change management aspects and making sure that individuals on our management leadership team understand what's happening and can drive change management down through their organizations. Um, I talked in the beginning about our goals and guiding principles. Uh, I. I think this is something we did in the first month and I encourage anyone to do it really before you you set out setting goals and guiding principles and identifying how through your governance processes you are going to hold to those. Um, for us, they were that this was a business led transformation. We wanted to stay fit to standard. We are going to engage the organization early and often, and we wanted to focus on data integrity. And we use those goals and guiding principles throughout the project to make sure that we were making the right decisions at the right times that were keeping us uh, on the right path. Um, finding a partner, um, in this case for us, it was Capgemini that has the tools, methods, and people to implement SAP in the way that we need to implement SAP the today, and not the way that we might've implemented SAP 10 years ago. Now, that doesn't mean we didn't face some unexpected obstacles or challenges. Um, so as I mentioned before, one of the key business challenges we were trying to solve was an integrated trade promotion management with finance. So essentially needing to implement SAP's CRM BW systems for trade back with S4 HANA. Now, mm -hmm. SAP has recently released a new version of their trade promotion management solution, and we did have some complexities in kind of being one of the first users to implement that from a greenfield perspective in the integration back to to sap um, what's helped us through that is that kind of three-legged relationship between capgemini sap and ourselves and making sure that we're um, sticking true to to uh, what we need to from a delivery perspective and not over engineering the solution while also leaning on sap to make sure that they're giving us what we need um, I think we couldn't go through this whole conversation without saying COVID has had an impact on how we've delivered this project. We've had to learn new ways of working. Um, it's impacted our business, which has created different conversations on our go live timelines. But we've been able to navigate through that by really leaning on those best people, by leaning on our partners, and by having confidence that we're sticking to our goals and guiding principles, as well as making sure that we're doing right by our business and that we're setting readiness expectations so that we can make sure that we're delivering against those, those goals. Um, I'm going to let Liam kind of cover the last two bullets because um, I think as 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 our leader, I think it's important for him to talk about those two for you guys. Yeah, thanks, Kim. I mean, so you know, it, it's it, it's um you got to be careful how you phrase it. Can you say on one hand, our partners SAP and Capgemini have brought great skills and experience to the game, but then also to say one of the challenges has been that we're pioneers, but the, both can be true at the same time. Um, we're doing some pretty interesting things which caught the attention of SAP and Capgemini early on because the breadth of the project, 
Um, the fact that it's almost like a green field and that we're, we're, we're taking nothing with us, we're abandoning the old boats and going to a brand new platform. Um, and then the, the fact that there's some new technology, Kim mentioned TPM is very, very uh, fresh out of the box and we're doing some really, really interesting things with TPM, which is part of the design of SAP, but still cutting edge uh, in the cloud. So um, I think our partners, both SAP and Capgemini, would be fine to, for me to say that we, we do feel like we're pioneers, and that's why we've got the attention uh, at a very high level uh, from both of our key partners on this project. Um, it has led to some challenges, but we're getting through them together, and I think we're all going to come out of this a lot stronger, learning some things that don't quite work the way we thought they did. And I would even also want, want, to, want to include Agile. You know, uh, Capgemini brought some great Agile skills in the CPG path solution, um, but through the course of this project, again, for the reasons we've mentioned, they, they, they've they learned and grown and, and honed those tools so that um, they're even better now. And one final thing on the sustain organization, we're now to the point in the project with a go live um, about a month away for our first location um, that we we probably should have spent more time on the sustain organization, which is what we're calling the the run mode for once things are live. Because we had a smoldering platform with our former uh, ERP, which we've outgrown and was heavily customized, we probably should have spent more time talking about what what it will look like when we support the SAP implementation um, in terms of resources, cost, people, and also just the way we work. So now that it's getting very, very tactical and what that organization looked like, we're finding it's a more difficult conversation than we expected, and we probably should have spent more time on that in the early months. So this slide is way too busy to be talked about, so let me just tell you what I would like you to take away from it. Um, we're doing something really special at Marzetti, and the 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 whole thing from the beginning was was based on the premise of um, we want to be one of those rare companies that doesn't dread the updates from SAP or from any other strategic partner. We want to anxiously anticipate those updates. So by building in automated testing, a robust QA and testing uh, organization, and a robust uh, OCM and training organization, and the sustain model uh, with a release management process that is uh, we're expecting that to be monthly. We want to change it from where uh, our business partners see these updates and these monthly releases as a disruption in business. We want them to think of it as like Christmas 12 times a year, where the new functionality uh, being delivered is anxiously anticipated. It's already been socialized through change management. It's already been trained. Um, and it, and it brings benefits that our business uh, badly needs. So the slide is intended to demonstrate uh, with tremendous detail that we've thought about how we're going to do work, uh, enhancements uh, to existing capabilities, um, bug fixes, um, new functionality, uh, product releases will all be coordinated very, very seamlessly through the tools which are listed on the page. And it, from the beginning, it's all been designed around the concept of not being one of those companies that dreads these updates. We will anxiously anticipate them and our business will, will be ready to put those benefits into action from day one. So uh, that's what this slide is intended to represent. So from the very beginning, uh, it has always been about the business. So I'm not gonna go through each of these because you know they don't look that different than any of the project you might've read about uh, or done yourselves, ERP implementations. Um, these are business KPIs that are gonna dramatically change when we um, go live. We've taken this sort of a, a mantra of crawl, walk, run. In some places, we're, we're going from basically laying stationary on the floor to crawling. Other places, we're going from crawling to a walk. Uh, I don't know that we're really saying we're, we're ready to, to run anywhere yet, but some areas where we feel like we're really leapfrogging and we're going to be very, very com much more competitive than we've been in the past. To highlight a couple real quick, I think our commercial area, uh, Kim mentioned the TPM space where we've just done some really revolutionary things, and we weren't all that good at it before. We're going to be very, very capable in the future of making sure our, our TPM spend uh, results in the highest impact and, and we don't spend any more than we need to. So I think we're going to be leapfrogging our current capability there. Master data is an enormous capability for us because we took the time to do an MDM project simultaneously with the project, implement a brand new river sand solution, and we're going to have great stewardship going forward so our data stays clean going forward. Um, my own space, you know, although I'm a business person, uh, I'm the CIO, and I, I'm very, very pleased at what we've done from the information technology perspective. Um, I, I have to pinch myself to think that I'm going to be one of those rare CIOs that has virtually zero technical debt once we go live. We'll have four key partnerships, SAP, Dell, Boomi, River Sand, and Microsoft that make up the bulk of our capability. And all of the benefits we were going to generate in the future, the bulk of them will come through those four platforms, and we will not carry forward with us 
into the new world, any technical debt or uh, customization, legacy systems, it will be a brand new shiny boat to sail the, the oceans with. And I also think that finally, one, one thing to point out, our analytics is just going to go grow by leaps and bounds. We've thought about how the data will be stored, how it will be retrieved, how it will be presented. And luckily, we've had tremendous support from uh, key organizations, supply chain, finance, to invest heavily in analytics. And we're going to take some serious jumps forward um, built on those four key platforms I mentioned previously. So there's some things I really, it's like if you, if you just take away a few things, um, I mean, how do we say this is different from other projects is what I really want to leave, leave with you. I've said throughout this project that there really is only one failure mode of any ERP implementation, and they do have a will to fail, which is uh, epic. That one failure mode is executive support, because if you have executive support, you can clear any roadblock that comes along your way, whether it's having the right people, whether it's finances, whether it's um, fit to standard. If you have executive support, you can achieve those uh, clearing those roadblocks. And if you don't have it, it's going to be a struggle. Um, we, we have our CEO has been bought into this project. He understands his role in the project. You don't get to above 85 percent fit to standard without executive support. It's simply not possible because a lot of it, your executives, uh, well intended, will want to put functionality in that serves a niche or it serves a single uh, uh, capability or a single si single situation. But but the long term benefits of fit to standard are so strong that you have to have executive support to push back on those those specialty requests. And we've had that. The penny wise, pound wise comment is that our CEO and our MLT have known going in that these projects have a way of, of, um, of changing shape and, and they're going to be roadblocks. The trade promotion space was a roadblock. COVID was, was a roadblock. And they haven't gotten, um, they haven't lost sight of the fact that the end game is worth it. Um, and when we've had to ask for more funding, when those special situations arose, we've had it. We've, we've had their support. Um, I can't overemphasize fit to standard. And the thing is, most folks who do these projects know it's important, but somehow they manage to let it slip away. Um, we implemented, uh, Kim and, and the, our business uh, project leader uh, implemented with Capgemini support, I should say, the Office of No, which stands for new objects, but really just means no. And anybody requesting a, a customization had to go before the Office of No, and typically the response was no for all the right reasons. And we've been able to protect that fit to standard, and that has just been wind in our sails. And finally, there have been many times about this project where, uh, because of the pioneer nature of what we're doing, that, like, you know, uh, where is the right answer going to come from? Is it our own people? Is it Capgemini? Is it SAP? And there have been times when it looked as if the solution would put one party at odds against the other. But throughout it all, we've been able to say, look, we're, we're going to win or lose together. And um, uh, there's no space for, uh, for grandstanding or protecting uh, your reputation. It's just, you know, open the kimono and find out how we fix it. And I think that that has been the best and most rewarding thing about the partnership with Capgemini and SIP. They've both taken that approach. They, they've heavily invested in our success. And I think it's been uh, carrying the day to this point, and I expect it will continue to carry the day. John? Okay, well, thank you, Liam, and thank you, Kim. I mean, that was a, a fantastic view from, you know, the people that are, are driving what is truly a amazing project. Well, hello, NRF attendees. I hope everyone enjoyed that session. We're lucky that uh, both Kim and Liam are here to take some questions. Uh, the first question uh, that came from the, the group, uh, Liam, was about TPM the value uh, that you see you're going to get and the impact of it being in the cloud. Sure. Um, thanks, John. And thanks, everybody, for attending uh, this uh, presentation. Uh, a big piece of our benefits case was based on TPM. So it was our goal from the beginning to improve that space. Um, as most folks attending this conference know, trade promotion is a, is a big part of anybody that does business in retail space. Um, we were, I don't want to name names, but we were not happy with our previous solution. It was more or less just a, a checkbook for keeping score. It wasn't integrated and the analytics behind it weren't um, sufficient for us to determine whether we were getting any bang for our buck. So our goal was to potentially reduce uh, trade promotion spending if possible, uh, but also, if not more importantly, uh, to understand how much trade promotion spending was affecting our sales. We couldn't do that with a current system. So our goal was to move to a modern platform and um, the integrated solution with the SAP, like I, like I said in the presentation is fairly cutting edge, allowed us to integrate with um, 
the uh, SAP solution from the beginning. With respect to cloud, um, Kim, do you want to comment on that? Sure. So, I mean, uh, trying to keep our land, uh, our or most of our landscape in the cloud. So, S4 HANA, um, HEC deployed to Microsoft Azure um, from a single tenant extended edition solution was already going to be in the cloud. So, um, SAP offering trade promotion management in the cloud as well allowed us to keep those two systems as close together as possible, knowing that we wanted the two applications to integrate. So we had um, a closed loop system between trade and finance, allowing us to do all the things and seek the benefits that Liam talked about. Thanks, Kim. Well, I mean, and that's a good point about how, you know, everything is in the cloud. You don't own any technology assets or take that on. But Liam, you also mentioned that you were able to keep technical debt low. And we've been asked, you know, what are some of the, you know, principles, activities, and techniques that you use to eliminate technical debt? Well, first, let me uh, tip of the cap to uh, Kim and her counterpart on the business side uh, for in the process of leading this project, they set up what's called the Office of No, which uh, loosely stands for new objects, but really just stands for no. And our ability to say no to customization uh, and remain fit to standard um, has been a huge part of our ability to reduce technical debt. So we did have some tailwinds in the fact that we, we, we are not bringing with us extensive customization. We're not indebted to our previous platform. The customizations built into that platform, we weren't particularly wed to. So we really were able to, to pick up and, and abandon the boats on one side of the island and walk across the island to the, the brand new shiny SAP solution. So uh, we, we, and for those embarking on a similar project, I'd recommend that the closer you can get to fit to standard, the better that allowed us to um, uh, focus on four key platforms going forward. Um, SAP, uh, Riversand for master data, Del Boomi for integration, and Microsoft for um, uh, power apps and for reporting. Uh, those four platforms will be the centerpiece of, of most of our, our app landscape going forward. And um, we just really are very, very fortunate to not have a ton of, ton of technical debt. Again, mostly tied to saying no to customizations. Thanks, Liam. And, and Kim, you know, when I look at the Ascent project, I think that, you know, your team really took advantage of the benefits of Agile and that there was a component of how Agile and the way the business experience solution helped that adopting standard. Would you uh, talk a little bit about how Agile worked for Ascent and your thoughts? Sure, and I actually think that Agile and the concept of the Office of No and Fit to Standard actually fit very closely together, right? Um, because an Agile methodology in a large-scale SAP delivery would be complicated if you were customizing the solution. So instead, we took the approach both through our Office of No as well as through the Agile methodology to say um, we wanted to implement industry standard best practices, um, procurement processes, um, aren't really that different, right? They're not a lot of differentiated capabilities from a business perspective there. And so we should be able to stay fit to standard for SAP. Um, and so we used um, Agile to really start with, well, this is what standard SAP looks like. How can we re-engineer our business processes to fit to those industry standard best practices? And really only allowing ourselves to say yes in a very limited fashion to capabilities that were going to, um, that we were already differentiated from a go-to-market perspective or a business perspective. So if it was uh, wrote repeatable standard activities that aren't making us any money um, and or aren't differentiating us to our customers, we weren't going to customize to do that. And so then from an agile delivery perspective, uh, that made, um, uh, executing in smaller chunks and demonstrating those smaller chunks of capabilities to our business a lot easier because we weren't writing these big pieces of monolithic code to support, you know, legacy business processes. Instead, we were just configuring the SAP solution on top of the industry standard capabilities that iCaptivate was giving us um, and, and doing that in smaller chunks and demonstrating our business our business to validate that the business process re-engineering we were doing to fit to SAP standard was going to work for our business and identifying how the change impacts would impact our business and some of the things that we would need to change in order to support that in the beginning. And so I think I Captivate really gives you the platform to start from that industry standard best practice and then iterate on that in agile sprints over time 
integrating with the business frequently to make sure that they're bought in, understand the impacts and can go forward with us on the change that we need to from a process perspective. Thanks, Kim. Well, I think we are just at our, our end of our half hour. Um, there were some more follow-up questions on, you know, that adoption of that clean digital core, what were the criteria in the office of no? Um, so um, appreciate that we're not going to uh, take those on right now, but uh, we'll look for a way to, to get that, that information out. So I want to say thank you to, to Liam and Kim. You, you know, told a great story. And uh, thank you to the NRF attendees for giving us your time.